محمد رسول الله لا اله الا الله علي ولي The main difference between Sunni and Shia Muslims is the concept of leadership or who has the right to lead and guide the Muslims. For Sunnis, it's whoever is qualified. So they have to have the religious qualification, they have the practice and the knowledge of the religion, and they have the leadership ability, capability. For Shia, their focus is the person has this righteousness, but also they have to be from the bloodline of Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. So they have to come from the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, through his second son Al Hussein. Though they count Al Hassan as well. So for them, there's this requirement of being in that bloodline to be accepted, and then with that, you get differences and divisions about which son would be qualified, and also uh, different understandings of what that qualification means. Is he infallible? Can he change the law and reinterpret things? Does he have secret knowledge? Those kind of things come with that. Okay, Jazakallah. Thank you very much, Uzair, for accepting that the, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala essentially is the one who chooses leaders, and He even agreed with the case of Dalut uh, that He was appointed over the people. So, brothers, the debate is ended there. My purpose was merely to prove that the concept of imamat is a status that is designated by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Based on that admission, we now have to reject essentially the Sheikhan and all the leaders who came after them. Now, I want to address the verses that he mentioned, the points. Firstly, he said, prove that Imam is a divinely made status. In Surah number 2, verse 1 to 4, I prove from the verse of Ibrahim that it's a divine status, which Ibrahim, Ibrahim alayhi Islam achieved and very late in, in, in late in his life. How do I prove his authority over other people? Well, look, as we know, Allah's messenger came to the entire of man. He came to the whole for the whole of mankind. Now, the question is, were there other prophets who were present during the time of Ibrahim? Of course there were. We know from the Holy Quran, Surah number 14, verse 4, we sent a messenger except with the language of his people in order that he might clearly explain it to them. So there were prophets around during the time of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. So when Ibrahim was made the imam over mankind, it would have included these prophets. Point number one. Point number two. He said, the Imam must be masoom by divine isma. In, in other words, he must be protected by Allah from sins and errors. Number one, Surah 15, verse number 39. Iblis said to God, because you have put me in the wrong, I will lower mankind and put them into the wrong. All except your devoted servants, Mukhlisin. Surah number 38, verse number 83. Iblis said, Iblis said by, by your glory, I shall mislead them all except those of your chosen servants, the chosen ones from amongst them. Again, Surah number 39, verse number 37. It says, and whoever Allah guides, for him there is no misleader. Is not Allah the exalted in the might and the owner of retribution? And we know the Imams guide by the, the Amr of Allah, the command of Allah. His third point. That the earth cannot remain without a rightful imam as long as there's an imam on it. Okay, let's have a look. Surah number 13, ayat number 7. And those who disbelieved say, Why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? You are a warner, and for every people there's a guide. And we know that the guide is one who's chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point number 4. It's essential for an imam to be supported by divine help. I already showed this verse, Surah number 32, number 23. And indeed, we gave Musa the book, so be not you in doubt of meeting him. And we made it a guide to the children of Israel. And we appointed from among them imams, aima, well, imams, gu guiding by our command when they were patient and they used to believe with certainty, yakin. So these are the safat and attributes of the imam. 
Point number five, the deeds of the people are not hidden from the Imam. No problem. Ayat number seven, 17, verse number 71. And think of the day when we shall summon every community with its Imam. Those who are given their record in the right hand shall read the record of their deeds and shall not be wronged await. So here you got the you got that verse in response. Point number six: the Imam must have knowledge of all that's needed by the people for the good in this world and in the next. Okay, so number seven, item number one, one eight one. Among those whom we have created, there are people who guide with the truth and do justice thereby. Item number thirty five twenty eight. Of Allah's servants, only the knowledgeable of His sight are truly in awe of Him. Allah is indeed the Almighty, the All Forgiving. He said it's impossible for any other person to surpass the Imam in any virtue. So again, I'll finish on this one verse, Surah 35, Ayat number 32. Then we cause to inherit the book those who we have chosen of our servants. And among them is he who wrongs himself. And among them is he who is a moderate. And among them is he who is foremost sabakun in good deeds by the permission of Allah. That inheritance is what is great bounty.